This is a big story. We're going to go back in time, what, about a week, a few days, I don't know. Uh, this is testimony you might have seen before. This is uh, from UPenn president, or now former president, ex-president, uh, Liz McGill. Here she is in Congress uh, answering questions about the speech allowances uh, that she and uh, her board or her team uh, will make on campus. At Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment. Yes. I, I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. So is your if testimony it, that it, you will not answer yes? If it uh, is, if the, yes speech or becomes, no. if the speech becomes conduct, it can be harassment, yes. Conduct meaning committing the act of genocide? No. The speech is not harassment? This is unacceptable, Ms. McGill. I'm gonna give you one more opportunity you should really for the take world to see. Your, uh, at your State Department alumni and his behavior towards an innocent Egyptian hot dog vendor in New York for an example of what she's talking about. Right, exactly, exactly. Targeted harassment, exactly, good point. What's his name, Stuart Sel Seldowitz, right? Seldowitz, Seldowitz. Yeah. yes. Your answer. <laughs> Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's code of conduct when it comes to bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be harassment. The answer is yes. And Dr. Gay at right. Harvard. Now, look, we had Mr. Glenn Greenwald on the show on Friday, and we spoke a little bit about this, what he said his take on this is is exactly mine and it was hers which is that political expression itself is not harassment if you target that at an individual if you bully a jewish student right in that way then that is harassment so that was the point she was trying to make she was trying to make a subtle point and congress is not the forum to do that uh she must not have taken too many political science courses there at her own university because attempting that kind of subtlety is a bad decision and she paid a very dear price for it uh obviously she has stepped down as president today but between today and that day uh she put out a little apology video attempting to clarify her remarks there was a moment during yesterday's congressional hearing on anti-semitism when i was asked if a call for the genocide of jewish people on our campus would violate our policies in that moment, I was focused on our university's longstanding policies aligned with the U.S. Constitution, which say that speech alone is not punishable. I was not focused on, but I should have been. The irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of Jewish people is a call for some of the most terrible violence human beings can perpetrate. Please let it's me keep evil. my tenure. Please let me keep Plain my tenure. Simple. I want to be clear, a call for genocide of Jewish people is threatening, deeply so. It is intentionally meant to terrify people. One might people say it's a hundred million times worse right. yeah. than the call for genocide of Palestinians. Yeah. And hatred for centuries and were the victims of mass genocide in the Holocaust. In my view, it would be harassment or intimidation. For decades, under multiple Penn presidents and consistent with most universities, Penn's policies have been guided by the Constitution and the law. In today's world, where we are seeing signs of hate proliferating across our campus and our world in a way not seen in years, these policies need to be clarified and evaluated. Penn must initiate a serious and careful look at our policies, and Provost Jackson and I will immediately convene a process to do so. As president, I'm committed to a safe, secure, and supportive environment so all members of our community can thrive.
we can and we will get this right. Thank you. And a couple days later, Penn President Board Chair resigned amid backlash to remarks. University of Pennsylvania President Liz McGill reports the Washington Post has resigned after intense criticism from donors, alumni, and others of her testimony at a congressional hearing about anti-Semitism on college campuses. Uh, Scott L. Bach, chair of Penn's Board of Trustees, said in a note to the campus community that McGill will stay in the role until an interim president is appointed. After that, she will remain a tenured faculty member at the university's law school. The note was sent shortly before Bach announced that he would step down as board chair. In a separate note, he wrote, Former President Liz McGill last week made a very unfortunate misstep consistent with that of two peer university leaders sitting alongside her after five hours of aggressive questioning before a congressional committee. Following that, it became clear that her position was no longer tenable, and she and I concurrently decided that it was time for her to exit. The world should know that Liz McGill is a very good person and a talented leader who was beloved by her team. She is not the slightest bit anti-Semitic, but we have to pretend that she is or our donors will stop funding the next swimming pool or whatever the fuck we want to build to lure the kids in to, for a hundred grand a year. Working yeah. with her was one of the great pleasures of my life. The moves came a day before Penn's Board of Trustees was set to meet amid the growing leadership crisis at the Ivy League School in Philadelphia. It has been my privilege to serve as president of this remarkable institution, McGill said in the note to campus. It has been an honor to work with our faculty, students, staff, alumni, and community members to advance Penn's vital missions. Now, look, I am not going to get lured into a debate as to what kind of speech should be allowed on their stupid fucking college campus, whether it's Penn or Harvard or Columbia or anything like that. If you want to say that calls for genocide constitute harassment and are therefore cancelable offenses, that is your right to do with your campus what you want. However, given the fact that uh, according to Israel themselves, civilians make up 61% of Gaza deaths from airstrikes, why isn't support for Israel considered a call for genocide since Israel is actually committing genocide? There's a lot yes. less interpretation necessary when someone says, we stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. If that sounds familiar, that's what Chuck Schumer was chanting at the Israel March in Washington, D.C. So if you want to interpret from the river to the sea as a call for genocide, even though it is not, you want to interpret certain words that I'm not sure we're allowed to say here in East Berlin, so I won't, as genocide, that's up to you. But there's no room for interpretation when someone says at this moment they support Israel. According to Israel, more than half of Gaza deaths are civilians. That's Israel's number, which means you know it's a bullshit number. You know the actual number's got to be a lot higher than that. But according to Israel themselves, of the 16,000 dead, what's 60% of 16,000? What, 9,000? 9,000 civilians killed in eight weeks. That's 1,000 innocent people a week murdered by the Israeli state. That's genocide. So if it's cancelable to support genocide, then there's no interpretation necessary when someone says they back Israel. So I want to see a mass wave of resignation letters from talent agencies in Hollywood, from Wall Street boards, from prominent media figures, right? Let's, let's, let's hear them. Let's see them. If this is the rule, let it be the rule. It's your college. You make the rules. Fuck it. I don't care. Okay? But let's have some equal enforcement. Exhibit B, what does this look like to you? This is Ian Bremer tweets out, unclear what Israel is trying to accomplish planting flags in Gaza. Really? Unclear? <laughs> yeah. Looks like they are forcing people to flee an like, area I thought it that was they a are joke flattening when I saw that. and claiming for, their, for, for themselves. That looks to me like genocide. Look at what you're seeing. You're seeing ruin as far as the eye can see, a crater in the middle of a city with bombed out buildings in back of it, in back of it as far as the eye can see into the sunset and the Israeli flag planted in an area that they say they're not interested in occupying. What is that? That's called genocide. And people who support mm -hmm. Israel now support genocide. So let's cancel them. Let's cancel them and call it even.
Yeah, uh, and we've seen videos. I don't think we ever played it on the show, but I know we shared this back and forth of um, Israeli soldiers. Uh, you know, Apocalypse Now looms large over this episode. Sometimes that happens. You know, certain themes come up. Uh, if you remember, one of the most famous scenes in that movie was them surfing on the beach in the middle of the bombardments and the and the war. Um, yeah, no, there's been footage of the IDF forces having a great time on the beach in Gaza, you know, laughing it up. This is the world's most moral army. Even if you take them at their word that they would never celebrate the deaths of civilians and they're doing everything they can to avoid the deaths of civilians. Well, that footage demonstrates otherwise they look like they're having a grand old fucking time they don't look like people who are particularly disturbed by having murdered all of these civilians you know you don't go uh have a have a little uh annette funicello beach party right uh if you're really disturbed <laughs> about murdering uh the civilian population of gaza um in terms of the speech questions it's interesting that this happened at upenn because you, no no campus has been more quote unquote woke than UPenn and more prepared to enforce speech codes. This is of course the university that threatened the women on the swim team if they spoke out about having to share the locker room with Leah Thomas. Now the Zionists are basically making a case to expand that handling of speech to Jews. The core of their argument is, well, why do you do this for every other marginalized group and not for us? We want you to ban speech the same way you ban speech on the swim team. We want that to apply to Jews. We want that to apply to Zionism. It's clearly anti-Semitic that you do this for these other groups and not for us, which really, when you boil it down, is it, it i mean they're not wrong that this really co doesn't come down to a great respect for freedom of speech certainly upenn has not demonstrated that respect it is a question of which groups fit their worldview and the palestinians and their cause fit a worldview built around uh decolonization much better than the settler colonialist project of the zionist does the problem is that the zionists give them a lot of fucking money there are no palestinians that can turn around and pull a hundred million dollars out of upenn that's what i was referencing before during her speech a uh, a fund that donate a hundred million dollars in shares was threatening to take it back right and they made her resign right after that because they're not she ain't worth a hundred million dollars no no. Uh, that having been said, I was honestly surprised that they stood on core freedom of speech principles in this testimony. I was really surprised that they didn't just say, yes, of course, that's uh, eliminationist language. So it's very strange because all of these universities have been perfectly happy to throw people out um, if they misgender somebody or if they don't subscribe to critical race theory they've been you know i mean and and we've seen hypocrites like the weinsteins all of a sudden turn around and applaud this who have been decrying that yep. speech and of course the real battle here for civil libertarians is no the answer isn't to extend those speech codes to right. more groups it's to stop doing that so that when something like this comes up they can't throw in your face well you did it for them why won't you do it for us Exactly. Please clap.